We're now talking about the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries, which are the uh, arteries that supply the midgut and hindgut, respectively. Our superior mesenteric artery, or SMA, supplies midgut organs, which include the following. The pancreas and distal duodenum. The pancreas is illustrated, but you just don't see the duodenum in this illustration. Next is the jejunum, which is the more proximal part of the small intestine, and then the ileum, the more distal part of the small intestine. It also supplies the cecum and appendix and ascending colon, and finally, somewhere like halfway to two-thirds of the way across, the transverse colon. So let's discuss the branches. First, there's the trunk of the SMA which uh, arises uh, right below the celiac trunk from the abdominal aorta, courses over the third part of the duodenum, and then the first branch is our inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. That's the one that supplies that anastomotic connection with the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery, which is arterial supply from the foregut. All of these other branches are jejunal and ileal arteries supplying the jejunum and ileum respectively. Notice these long, long arteries, and they form these really cool arcades and then give off these tiny branches providing this rich vascular supply to our small intestines. Um, and that's all within the mesentery. Here we have our iliocolic artery, iliocolic, ileum, and colic. Whenever you see that term colic, it means colon or large intestine. And... Uh, you'll see off of that there is an appendicular branch that goes to the appendix. And this is an important artery to isolate during an appendectomy. The right colic artery is on the right side of the abdomen supplying the ascending colon. That's where the ascending colon is. And it uh, supplies the ascending colon, yeah, right colic. And then there's our middle colic that is going to be going up to part of the transverse colon um, and supplying that, and so the midgut ends somewhere along that transverse colon, where basically the supply of the middle colic artery is ending. Our inferior mesenteric artery, or IMA, supplies hindgut organs, <coughs> pardon me, which include the following. Our transverse colon, or the distal part of the transverse colon, and then goes to the left uh, uh, colic flexure, and then down the descending colon to the sigmoid colon, and then to the rectum. So left colic artery is shown here as supplying part of that transverse colon and the descending colon. Then you've got the sigmoidal arteries that supply that part of the sigmoid colon, and then our superior rectal artery that supplies the rectum and the upper part of the anus. So there's an anastomotic connection formed between the superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric artery, or and an anastomotic connection between midgut and hindgut arteries. So the superior mesenteric artery gives rise to the iliocolic and the right colic and the middle colic. And then our inferior mesenteric artery gives rise to the left colic sigmoidal arteries. Now the marginal artery of Drummond is an anastomotic connection between them all because take a look at that. You see that huge anastomosis and what contributes? All of them, ileal colic, right colic, middle colic, left colic, sigmoidal arteries, they all contribute to this marginal artery anastomosis. The two that are most intimately connected are that middle colic and the left colic because those are the two branches, either the end of the SMA or the beginning of the IMA, that help contribute to this marginal artery of Drummond. So there it is. It goes all the way around, and it forms basically like this picture frame.